In this video today, I'm gonna to go through nine music library tips for beginner DJs. The first tip that I'm gonna to give to you guys is to always play in BPM order. When you get into your DJ software, you should be ordering your crates by BPM order when you're playing. Now, if you're going into your R&B crate, your hip hop crate, your house crate, you should order it by BPM and then work down the BPM. So say for example, a lot of DJs do like starting at the top. So they might be at like, I don't know, 60 BPM. They might work their way down the crate. So then it will go to 70 BPM, 80 BPM, 90 BPM. And this is just how some DJs work their DJ sets. Now, some DJs do jump from BPM to BPM. I've heard DJs go from 60 BPM to 80 BPM to 80 BPM to 120 BPM. Obviously, if you do it correctly, it can sound good. But sometimes if you do it too much, it might sound a bit too crazy. But the best way to organize your crates inside your DJ software is by BPM. Now, you can also create BPM range crates in your DJ software as well. What you can do is you can create a BPM crate that goes from the range of, I don't know, 50 to 70 BPM, 70 to 80, 100 to 110. And then what this will do is it will create you a crate with just these BPM ranges inside it. Now, when you're playing your DJ sets, if you order it by BPM, it's gonna help you out a lot. Now, the only way I would say to you don't order by BPM is if you're doing like a planned set where you literally have to go from track one to track 20. But other than that, I really think that every single DJ, especially bigger in the DJs, you should be ordering by BPM to get through your DJ sets. The next tip I'm gonna give to you is make sure that you're using music library organization tools. Now, I'm gonna go through three today. There are Lexicon, Music Library Tools, and Crate Hack. Now, Lexicon is a music library organization tool and it is literally one of the best out there. So basically what you'll do is you'll import your music library into this software and then you can do a bunch of things from updating the titles, getting the year, getting the genre, clearing up your metadata, removing certain things in your track and title. Say for example, you're in Serato DJ Pro and you wanted to go to Rekordbox. They have a feature in there that allows you to go from one software to the other. You can also remove duplicates. There's a lot of features in Lexicon. So make sure you check in the link in the description down below to see all the features about Lexicon. The next tool I'm gonna to go through is Music Library Tools. Now, Music Library Tools is a tool that's been created by me. So basically what you'll do is you'll select a folder on your computer. If you have your folders sorted out correctly, it will be a lot easier. If you have a look on the screen right now, these are my folders on my computer. Now you can see all the different genres. So say for example, I wanted to get the years and the genres for my Afrobeat tracks or my house tracks. I'll select this folder and then I'll run it through Music Library Tools. Now, before I even run the populate script, I can run the clear genre and the clear year, which will clear all the data inside my DJ software. And then what I can do is run the populate year and genre in music library tools. And then what this will do, it will get the year and the genre from the internet and then put it into my MP3 tracks. So now I can organize my music by year. I can organize it by genre. I can create smart crates based on this new data that I've just received. So say for example, I wanted to make a smart crate for house music before 2010. I can create a smart crate inside Serato and put these rules in and because I have the data now this will create me a crate with all these tracks in here now I can go out and DJ and have an old school house set an old school R&B set if you're interested in music library tools check the link in the description down below now the next software that I'm going to go through is Crate Hackers Crate Hackers are a music library organization company that helps you organize your music library so you find the bangers and most importantly get rid of Serato face now every single DJ has been there where they're staring at their laptop scrolling 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 and they can't find their next track Crate Crate Hackers helps you in creating the best DJ crates, DJ playlists, so you don't have to keep scrolling and staring at your laptop. They do have a bunch of other features on there. The main feature I'm gonna to talk to you about today is I have a bunch of crates on there that cover most scenarios. So say for example, you're DJing in a club. There's a bunch of scenarios that go on. There could be when the club's opening, when the club needs to be warmed up during main set. There might be scenarios where ladies have come in. There might be scenarios where you need to play songs for like a hype crowd. Basically on Crate Hackers now, I have a bunch of crates on there that you can now download and then import into your DJ software. So basically what you'll do, you'll sign up to Crate Hackers, you'll grab one of my crates and then basically what it will do, it will scan your music library and see what tracks match my crates and then it will put it into a playlist for you which you can then export to your DJ software and then DJ straight from it. It's a really good software. So if you're interested in it, check the link in the description down below. The third tip I'm gonna give to you is make sure that you have multiple genres in your music library as a brand new DJ, you are going to come in and want to play a specific genre. Now, when I started, I just wanted to play old school R&B and hip hop. But as my DJ career kind of progressed, I realized that I needed to play more genres to get more opportunities. You got to think about it. Once I realized that 
playing more genres allowed me to get more sets. It made me build my music library a lot better. So now I'm downloading house tracks, I'm downloading drum and bass tracks, and this just allows me to get more and more sets. So in my music library, I have genres like 80s, dancehall, dance, house, Afrobeats, pop, rock. Literally, I have every single genre that I feel that I need. Now, with all these genres, I can play weddings, birthday parties, clubs, corporate events. I can literally play any event I want, and that allows me to expand my DJ brand. If I just wanted to play old school R&B, the DJ CB brand would only stay quite small. But now, because I'm playing different genres and going to different places and DJing in different cities, etc., I am able to expand the brand because I'm playing more music. Try and just open your mind a little bit and then what you can do is you'll play all these sets, you'll play all these multi-genre sets, these weddings, then you're gonna start to figure out your actual style. Then what you can do is start being a bit picky with your DJ set. The first few months, the first few years of your DJ career, you're gonna be doing sets that you don't like. You're gonna be playing weddings, playing cheesy music, you're gonna be doing playing line dances and stuff like that, but when you get about two, three years in, you're gonna start to realize what you do like and what you don't like, then you're gonna start saying yes to the ones that you do like, and then saying no to the ones that you don't like, and then you're gonna start to figure out what kind of DJ you want to be. If you come in and just say, I'm playing old school hip hop, I'm just playing old school R&B, you're not going to get anywhere. You need to play all the different genres and then figure out which ones you do actually like. Because I guarantee you might not like house music, right? But you might go play a house rave and you might enjoy it. Then you're going to start to grow to like house music. So what I would say to every single DJ and beginner DJs especially is make sure that your music library has a lot of genres in it so that can open you up to more opportunities. The fourth tip is to stay up to date with new music, but make sure that you're doing quality control and when I mean quality control when you're downloading new music make sure that you actually want it to go into your music library so when I was a brand new DJ what I would do is I would go to all my record pools DJ City BPM Supreme heavy hits if you want to get your first month for heavy hits use the code DJ CB in the checkout and that will get you a first month for $4.99 I would go to all these record pools and I would download every single song I wouldn't even listen to them I'd be like you know what that looks good that looks good that looks good the next thing you know you're building up this massive music library that's going to be hard to manage and it's gonna be a bunch of tracks that you don't even like. And then in about a year's time, you're gonna be deleting them and getting rid of them. So it's just a waste of time. So what I mean by quality control is when you're actually downloading new music, listen to the song and just take an extra few seconds and be like, am I actually going to play this? Is this going to work in my set? If the answer is yes, download it. If the answer is maybe or the answer is no, don't bother. Like I'm telling you this from now, from six, seven years of experience as being a DJ and doing music library organization, you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have all this music in your music library and you're gonna get to a point you're gonna be like, I need to delete some music. It's getting too, it's getting too much, it's too cluttered. Keep up to date with new music because you need to be on top of the new music when it comes out, but just make sure that you're doing a little bit of quality control when you're downloading loading. This way you'll be able to manage your music library a lot better and it won't get too big over time. The next tip I'm going to give you, which is tip number five, is when you've now downloaded the song, listen to it properly and determine where it goes in your music library. Now, the way I do things is I download music, then I determine if it's an opening track, a warm-up track, a main set track, or a track that I'm going to delete. But I'll, go, I'll get into the delete bit in the next step. But basically, you download your new music, you import it into your DJ software, you sort out all your messages, data and you've analyzed the tracks but now you're going to listen to it and be like does this track fit in the opening of my set, the warm up, or the main set? Now, the three sections are obviously different. The opening is when you get into a club, no one's in there, but you wanna play some songs that you like and you wanna warm yourself up, so that's opening. Warm up is when the dance floor starts to fill up, but you need to kind of build it up a little bit more, so then that's your warm up. And then main set is like the peak hour, peak two hours of the night, when everyone's been drinking a lot and everyone's ready to listen to the bangers, that's when you hit in with the main set. If your song doesn't fit in any of those three categories, why do you have it in your music Library. Just think to yourself, why do I have it? When you download new music, just determine if it's an opening track, a warm up track, or a main set track. Or if it is a track that you don't want, just put it into a delete pile and then delete it later. But like I said, I'll get into the delete part later on in the video. Number six is using tags in your music library. Now, when you download new music, you are going to need to somehow categorize your music, whether it's warm up, opening, or main set. Or you can go even further and start tagging it like ladies' tracks or 
or R&B warm up or main set hip hop or hype hip hop or anything. Just try and tag your tracks even more so you can be a lot more organized. Now, the reason why I say this is because when you're DJing, you wanna try and think less. So you wanna try and have every single scenario covered. So let me give you an example. So let's use the ladies tag. So say for example, you downloaded a bunch of tracks. So there might be tracks like No Scrubs, TLC or Love On Top Beyonce. These tracks are ladies tracks. So when you put these into your music library, in the comments column, put in there hashtag ladies. And then what you can do is you can create a smart playlist based on the rule hashtag ladies. Now, when you're DJing and you start to see some girls come to the dance floor, you can automatically just jump into that ladies folder and play all those tracks because every single track in that folder should be for the ladies, should be for the girls. That way you'll be able to build up the dance floor. The more ladies tracks that you play, the bigger the dance will get because the main thing that you need to do as a DJ is keep the girls dancing. Get the girls on the dance floor and keep them dancing. Then everyone else will come. And that's just one scenario. There could be another scenario where I use a tag called Club Classics. Now Club Classics is a great tag to have. Club Classics is tracks that everyone kind of knows. So you know like Montel Jordan, This Is How We Do It, Usher, Yeah, Sarani No Games, tracks like that. Those go under the club classics category. So when you get these kind of tracks in the comments column, put it as hashtag club classics and then create a smart crate based on that. Now that's another scenario covered. So say for example, you've got all the girls dancing on the dance floor. The guys on the edge of the dance floor are not going to wanna, they're not gonna wanna listen to Beyonce, Rihanna and stuff like that. They're gonna wanna hear more of your commercial tracks. So using tags in your music library will really help you out because it will just help you cover certain scenarios. Just think of the different scenarios that you've come across in the club or just come across in whilst you've been DJing. I guarantee there's been a point where there's been some old people on the dance floor but you don't have have like an oldies crate. So why don't you go for your music library, tag the oldies tracks with hashtag old. <laughs> or oldies and then create a smart crate from it. So when you hit that situation or hit that scenario, you can just jump straight into that crate. It's all about preparing yourself before the club. So when you get into the club, you're not overthinking and stressing when you're DJing. Number seven is create ready to go small playlists. So for me, I struggle with the, the hype hip hop. So you know when you play things like Pop Smoke Dior or any high energy tracks, I really struggle with carrying it on. So I might play Pop Smoke Dior and then I'm trying to think, what am I gonna play next? What am I gonna play next? What I've started to do is create small sets that help me with that. So I'll start that small set. I'll create a crate and I'll put Pop Smoke at the top, number one. Then I'll go through my crate at home and I'll be like, you know what? I might play Jumpman Drake after that. Then I might play Mo Bamba. Then I might play Paris, Kanye West and Jay-Z. Now I've built myself a crate at home that I can DJ with in the club. So when I'm in that scenario that I'm normally struggling with, I can just go straight into that crate and then play them five tracks and then move on. You might struggle with another genre. You might struggle with like, maybe some dance or, or you might struggle with some house. Why not create a small crate, something small like eight to 10 tracks and then order it in the way you'd play it and then play it in the club. Now, when you get to the club, you're gonna be a lot less stressed because all you gotta do is go from track one to track eight. And now because you've picked these tracks at home and you know they're gonna work, they should work in the club. My advice to you is to just make small, ready to go crates just in case you get into a sticky situation when you're in the club. Number eight is cue point in all your tracks. Now, when you import new music into your music library, it's really good to just cue point all your tracks. The way I cue point my tracks is, say for example, I've got an intro track, I'll mark it at the start of the track, halfway through the intro, and then right at the drop. If it's just an original track with no intro, I'll start it at the start of the track and then the drop. But also I'm, I do a lot of scratch drops, so I'll always put a cue point on the snare just before the drop, or I'll put cue points where I feel like the scratch drop will work perfectly. So just get into the habit of when you add music into your music library, just sort out your cue points because what you don't want to do is when you're DJing, you select a track and it hasn't got any cue points. So what you'll end up doing is skipping that track because you don't have a cue point. I've been there so many times. There's so many tracks in my music library that I've not had a cue point on. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm not playing this because I don't know where in the track I should drop it or blah, 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 where I should mix out. When you're at home, when you've imported new music into your music library, just add the cue points. It takes like five to 10 seconds to add two or three cue points and then you're ready. Make sure that you're preparing yourself before you go out and DJ, it's really gonna help you out. The ninth tip I'm gonna give you is make sure that you're deleting your tracks every six months or so. Now, a lot of DJs, including myself, we have built up a lot of music over time. You're gonna get to a point where your music library is gonna get so big you can't manage it. Every six months, go through your music, go through your genre crates, go through your club crates or whatever, and just go through the tracks, one, two, however many tracks are in there, and just ask yourself, am I still playing this track? Is this track still relevant? Is this track still popular? If the answer is no, 
delete it. I'm not saying just press command delete and then get it off your computer. Move it from your computer, put it onto an external hard drive, an external SSD or something. And then once it's on there, delete it from your computer. Now, if you happen to so want it again, it is on that hard drive. What that's gonna do is it's gonna start clearing out your crates and your playlists. So when you're DJing, you're not scrolling through a bunch of tracks that you don't wanna play. You're gonna start clearing out your music, deleting the tracks, and then you're gonna start having crates full of tracks that you wanna play. Let me give you an example. Say for example, you were back in the vinyl days and you're carrying your crates to your DJ set. Why are you carrying tracks in your crate that you're not gonna play? It's just extra weight for you. Do the same with your digital files. Do the same with your MP3s. Go through your tracks. If you don't think this track's gonna work, you don't like it or you just wanna get rid of it altogether, take it out of the crate and then DJ without it. Cause I guarantee when you're looking through this crate now, you're not scrolling through tracks that you don't like or you think you need to delete. You're just gonna have a bunch of tracks that you want to play and you know that's gonna work with the crowd. So that was nine music library tips for beginner DJs. Now that you've watched this video, check this video out here.